Arranged marriages are rarely pretty. I mean, how can you be happy with someone you have barely met or who your parents have chosen for you? Let alone if you're already in a relationship with someone else. Well, in 2009, this was the situation for Lagvinder Chima. He was about to turn 40 and he was about to marry a 21-year-old Gurjit Chung. Their families were happy and eager to see them say their vows. But for Lagvinder, it was a pretty different story. He had been dating someone for the last 16 years, unknown to his family. This was 45-year-old Lagvir Singh, a mother of three whose life had been centered around Lagvinder for a long time. And when she felt that she was losing him to another woman, she did the unthinkable. So our story begins in London, UK in the 1990s. This is when Lagvinder Chima arrived in the country from India after his parents had arranged for him to marry someone. But within a year or two, they had separated. Still, Lagvinder, all lucky, decided to stay in London and share a flat with his older sister and her family. And it was through his sister that Lagvinder met someone special. Typical of many Punjabi families, a very big family lived inside Lucky's sister's home. This was a tight-knit group that trusted each other and welcomed Lucky straight away. But unknown to everybody else, a heated affair started. Lucky was single, but Lakvir was married and had three children. Lucky and Lakvir continued their affair under the nose of Lakvir's husband, who in fact was undergoing treatment for cancer at the time. Eventually, Lucky moved into his own home and the affair continued. Now they could keep it a secret forever. Lakvir would visit him, cooking and cleaning for him as if she was his wife. All the while, her husband was struggling with cancer. She would visit every day. She would do his washing. She would do his shopping. She would do his cooking. All the devotion of a loyal wife despite the fact that she was still married to her own husband. It was pretty strange how hard Lugver worked to keep Lugvinder satisfied, all the while tending to her sons and husband. Meanwhile, Lucky started renting out a part of his place to make some extra cash. Helen lived there for a few years and she saw Lugver come in and out of the house, mostly to cook when Lugvinder was not at home. Or when Lucky got home. Well, they would also sleep together, but they worked hard to hide this, even from Lucky's tenant. Lakvir even ended up having two abortions after getting pregnant with Lucky. She knew this would trigger a huge scandal. Twice during this clandestine affair, Lakvir got pregnant. But on both occasions, Lucky insisted that she had an abortion because he simply could not bear the thought of this relationship being exposed and all the shame that would come with that being heaped upon them both. So when the pressure of hiding it all was too much for Lakvir, she proposed divorcing her husband and marrying Lucky instead. But Lucky had a whole different view on things, the traditional Sikh way. Divorce in an extended family, in a Sikh family especially, is a very big thing. It does happen. It's obviously becoming more prevalent now, as the years go on with more and more marriages ending generally. But it's something that's not taken lightly in a Sikh family. Not only would divorce trigger big discussions, but it would ruin the relationships with their connected families. After all, they were related by marriage. Lucky like feared he would have looked like the ultimate traitor, destroying Lagvir's family and causing a rift in the tight-knit family. In the fall of 2008, Lucky's family decided to set him up for another marriage. He was nearly 40 and they were feeling the pressure to see their son married once and for all. 
Of course, the family didn't know about Lakvir and Lakvinder's affair. So Lucky's family met up with Gurjit Chung, a 19-year-old Sikh woman who was looking to get married. Although they hadn't known each other before, there was a special kind of spark between Lucky and Gurjit. Lucky's nephew said they didn't know each other for that long, but it was quite short. It happened quite quickly and it happened kind of out of the blue. Lucky and Gurjit were in love. They were enthusiastic about planning their wedding together. He decided to, you know, give it, give that a chance, and and he got engaged and and was due to get married. They seemed very happy. Um, my uncle was very happy. I mean, almost like a young kid again. Lugfir had been by his side for sixteen years, though. She had cooked and cleaned for him and been at his disposition day and night, hoping that one day he would end up marrying her. And now she was watching from afar, her pain piling up by the minute. First, she started sending him mile-long texts, begging him to stop the relationship with Gurjit and continue his affair with her. But Lucky's stance was clear. He would marry Gurjit and stop his affair. He wanted to be a loyal husband and start afresh. When he urged Lugvir to forget everything that happened between them, Lugvir replied, I can't forget my feelings. But this was unlike the Lugvir that Lucky had known for almost two decades. For somebody as passive and submissive and placid as Lugvir, those words were a real warning sign. Those words were somebody screaming for help. But for her to express these kinds of feelings so openly, she was asking somebody to recognize what was going on within her. Lagvir had lived her last 16 years believing in a fairy tale. She would do anything Lucky asked because one day she might convince him to get married. She would divorce her sick husband and run away into the sunset with her lover. But now she felt like she had been living a lie. She couldn't stand this. If she couldn't have Lucky, no one else could. It was late 2008 and Lucky and Gurjit's wedding plans were getting closer and closer to reality. They had set a date too. Valentine's Day of 2009. But Lugvir had a plan too. First, she got a plane ticket for her home country, India. In India, the herbal form of aconite is used in medicine. In the UK, it will be used as a poison. Former surveillance officer says, as little as one gram of the root is enough to kill. Body who has read a Harry Potter book or even seen a film will recognize wolfsbane or monk's hood. And it's a very interesting plant so aconite is a notorious poison sometimes called the queen of poisons i think the first case documented where indian aconite was implicated as a poison dates back to the 1830s in this country but it's probably been used as a poison for many years before that and just not recognized as such as little as one gram of the root is enough to kill it was just before christmas 2008 on his own at home, Lucky reheated a meal and had a few bites. Before long, he was violently sick, vomiting and all his limbs going numb. He dialed 999 and was rushed to the emergency room. Luckily, he got to the hospital in time and the doctors were able to keep him alive. But it was a tough week for Lucky. He was bedridden and there were two women fighting for his attention. Gurjit and Lagvir were by his side every single day. Gurjit was his wife-to-be and by now she came to care deeply for Lucky. But what was Lagvir trying to do? Was she trying to be the hero, appearing like a sort of guardian angel to earn back his affection? Or was she trying to make sure that he was dead? Lagvir didn't leave his bedside until Lucky's fiance. Gurjeet discovered that she was there and warned her to stay away from her fiancé. Things escalated between the two women in Lucky's life. 
Gurjeet said to Lakvia, just stay away, stop interfering in our lives. Gurjeet realized that the two had an affair, but now things were clear for her. She would marry Lucky, and Lakvir would learn to take no for an answer, but Lakvir wouldn't. Strangely enough, no one suspected foul play when Lucky was admitted to the hospital. In his job, he dealt with powerful chemicals, and his family simply thought that some of these chemicals had finally gotten to him. In reality, Lugvir was making one last desperate attempt to get her lover back. In the opinion of criminal psychologists, Lugvir didn't want to kill Lucky initially. She just wanted to appear like his savior. But her worst nightmare would come true. When he got back from the hospital, Lucky told Lugvir that their relationship was officially over. She was no longer allowed to hang out around his home anymore as it made him and Gurjit uncomfortable. As Helen, Lucky's tenant, was still living there, Lucky also told her to watch out for trouble. Why? Say somebody's warned me something is going to happen to me. That's what Lucky said. Something is going to happen to me. If somebody comes looking for me, tell them to phone me first. We say, okay. He says, if they're your friends, let them in, not mine. But again, Lugvir didn't take no for an answer. She continued to visit Lucky at his home, using the key that Lucky had asked her kindly not to. In January 2009, Lucky was thinking about changing the locks to his house, since nothing seemed to keep Lugvir away. One day, Lugvir entered Lucky's home and saw her ex-lover in bed with his bride-to-be. Maybe this should have been the last straw. The proof that she needed to walk away and start a new life or an old life with her husband and children. That wasn't gonna happen. Lagvir asked Lucky to have a chat and then started begging him again to end this relationship and take her back. This was not love anymore. It was obsession. The more Lucky would tell her that it was over, the more she would obsess about winning him back. By January of 2009, Lagvir had made a dreadful decision. On January of 27, Lucky and Gurjit reheated some curry and sat down to eat. Two weeks away from their wedding, they were happy and excited. But within a few minutes of eating, they both felt like they wanted to die. They were vomiting violently. Their faces were numb. Within minutes, Lucky, who had had seconds, was blind. Then he couldn't use his limbs either. With all of his power, he reached for his phone and called the emergency services. While waiting for the ambulance, Lucky also managed to call his nephew. Earlier that day, Lagvir had visited Lucky's home briefly while he was away at work. One of the tenants saw her in the house and, and saw that she took something out of the food. In my mind, I ignored her, saying she was going to dish up, eat something and put something back. Was the lady who had always been pleasant to her perhaps about to treat her to a homemade curry? No. A few minutes later, she put it back. And then we saw nothing about it. We just kept on having our tea and all that, ignored it. She had placed extract from the root of an aconite plant into a pre-prepared curry dish that she had left days before. Anyone who ate the curry would be in grave danger. Few minutes were all she needed to spike Lucky's curry with aconite. The fact that Lugvir did all of this in front of Helen goes to show just how far gone she was at this point. She didn't care if she got caught and she didn't care about the consequences of her actions. She hated her life and she hated herself and she blamed Lucky for it. Now on the evening of January 27, Lucky and Gurjit were paying the price. They were on the floor in severe pain, not knowing if they would leave for another minute, let alone another day. But before hanging up with the 999 operator, Lucky managed to give him a vital clue as to what was happening. He had been poisoned. Lucky also called out to Helen and the other tenants to come downstairs from their bedrooms and help out in any way that they could. It was in fact Lucky's family, not the ambulance, that got to the house first. 
As the ambulance didn't turn up, Lucky's nephew drove him and Gurji to the hospital as fast as they could. When they got there, doctors remembered this wasn't the first time Lucky showed these symptoms. He had been just treated for same sort of poisoning the month before. By now, both Lucky and Gurjit had passed out. Gurjit was placed in a medically induced coma in a desperate attempt to save her life. Meanwhile, Lucky was fully conscious. One of the most disturbing effects of aconite is that it paralyzes the organs inside. You're not able to speak after a while, but you know exactly what's going on. Lucky might have appeared passed out, but he was aware and awake and living through the most horrific pain. How could the person who claimed to love him the most do this to him? Within an hour of his arrival at the hospital, like he passed away, all his family crying in the hallway, desperate and at a loss, what had happened? For the police detectives, it was a simple question now. What poison had taken Lucky's life? The doctors suspected cyanide, but the detectives just wanted to know if the poison was of a metallic or an alkanoid type. Metallic poisons were pretty common in the Western world, but alkanoid ones definitely were not. Toxicology expert Professor Flanagan also learned that Lucky and Gurjit had experienced tingling and numbness in their extremities. This was specific to alkaloid poisons, not metallic ones. Slowly but surely, the green picture was becoming clear. Lakvir had gone to India back in December, purchased the most horrific poison she could legally get her hands on, and then proceeded to plan the deaths of her ex-lover and his fiance. When she got a final no from Lucky, she finalized her plan. Everything was confirmed by Gurjeet, who made a full recovery. Well, according to her, it will never be full. The hardest part for Gurjeet was learning what had actually happened. She had lost the man she loved because of his bitter ex. With Lucky telling the 999 operator his ex-girlfriend had poisoned them and Gurjeet confirming. Lagvir had access to their home. The police had a green light to arrest Lagvir Singh. The police brought Lagvir for an interrogation. Her story was bogus and the police knew it. So they arrested her for the first degree murder of Lagvinder and attempted murder on his fiancée. But she pleaded not guilty, which meant that the prosecution would have to demonstrate a direct link between her aconite and the death of Lucky. This wasn't easy. During her trial, Lagvir showed zero emotion, even with hundreds of people attending and the media surrounding her everywhere she went. It gets worse. She tried to blame the murder on her brother-in-law. Still, she hadn't thought of something. How would she explain the aconite in her purse? How did she expect the jury to believe the aconite was meant to treat a rash? And the alkaloid poisoning was one big coincidence. The circumstantial evidences were overwhelming, and Lagwar Singh was sentenced to life in prison. With the possibility of parole after 23 years, the judge said, You were not just a spurned lover. You did not explode in anger at your rejection. You set about a cold and calculating revenge. Your actions came as close as maybe to claiming the lives of two people on the verge of a new life together. Lagavir would be in her late 60s when she gets out, if ever. Meanwhile, Gurjeet and Lucky's family are working hard to overcome the terrible tragedy, the cruelty of the murder, and the dark reality behind this romantic triangle. But thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up.